It is my great pleasure now to be joined by Dr. Jens Yule Holst, the 2021 Banting Medal for Scientific Achievement recipient. Thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations on the honor. You played a major role in some of the earliest research into the gut hormones that we now know play a huge part in diabetes. So what drove you to undertake that research and what do you feel was your most satisfying achievement? I, as I was trained uh, as, a, as a surgeon when I was a young doctor and um, uh, I was in gastrointestinal surgery and I was very interested in this. And uh, we had some problems in the department with people who developed reactive hypoglycemia, postprandial reactive hypoglycemia. And we also had a lot of problems in those days with uh, therapy of duodenal ulcer disease. So. Um, uh, in both cases, we had the suspicion that something from the gut would um, either cause the hypoglycemia or could be used to uh, help the patients with duodenal ulcer disease. So I was very interested in finding out which factors for the gut, from the gut would actually be uh, involved in this. So um, <laughs> that was really the motive to try to find out what the reason was for this hypoglycemia. And it took about 25 years. And then we got the answer. It was this new hormone, GLP-1, that was responsible for this. And also, um, it turned out that we also could inhibit acid secretion with the same hormone. But uh, in the meantime, uh, other therapies, of course, uh, eradication of the, of the bacteria in the, in the antrum uh, was developed. And, and so that put an end to the surgery of, of duodenal ulcer disease, I guess. Talk about the reaction of some of the scientific community at the time when you were suggesting this kind of research. Oh, they were not terribly interested, I have to say. But uh, it was also difficult because we did not understand the ex extent of these discoveries in the days when we made them. Uh, so, uh, for instance, uh, with GLP-1, we found that it stimulated insulin secretion. But there were so many peptides that stimulated insulin secretion, so this was not great news. So it was the development where we found that Okay, it also inhibits glucagon secretion. Okay, it also inhibits appetite and food intake. Then putting everything together, it turned out to be one of a, a, a really important discovery. How much did you have to push to keep looking into the areas you were interested in? The problem always was money. Uh, it was always a, a fight to uh, get money enough to continue the research. Eventually, industry also became interested, and that helped somewhat. And it was extremely encouraging to see that these medications that were developed on the basis of our discoveries, that they actually were catching on, that people were using it. So that was a great satisfaction. Can you tell us a bit about the work you're doing today? What are you learning from bariatric surgery, and how might this translate into non-surgical interventions? So one of the interesting things that the lessons we learned from bariatric surgery is that the body has a, ca a capability of, of curing, more or less, both diabetes and obesity. That's what we can learn from the bariatric surgery. There is a mechanism hidden in the body that can actually reduce food intake and, and you know, cause these enormous uh, reductions in, 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 in body weight, and also that can uh, almost cure diabetes. The problem was to identify the mechanisms, first of all, and we, I guess we have done that by studying the effects of these hormones, GLP-1 and also PYY. And the next is then to understand why they are hypersecreted. And if we can understand that completely, then perhaps we can stimulate the body's own uh, secretion of these hormones to get the same results as we get with bariatric surgery, but without surgery. And I think this is really possible, and uh, we're currently working on a, on a wonderful and exciting project uh, with a somatostatin antagonists, where we think we can make a, a big difference. And so this is a very interesting field. So give us a preview of your talk at the meeting. Why should people stop by to listen? First of all, I hope that it's uh, just a little bit entertaining, I hope, so that it's not too boring to listen to. <laughs> but um, I guess the main message here is, first of all, to explain what the incretin effect is. It's not some something, you know, uh, a very boring or uninteresting uh, thing that we have, that people in the ivory to uh, tower have been working with secretly, but that it is a really important important physiological mechanism, uh, and also that it has tremendous input or influence in, in normal uh, blood glucose regulation and, 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 and nutrient regulation. Uh, and then, of course, uh, that it has been possible to translate the, the incretin effect into these important therapies. So I guess the, the awareness of the incretin effect and, and um, 
and the and the extensions of our uh, learnings from this uh, into uh, modern therapy are the important things that we uh, that I'd like to to uh, convey in in that lecture that I hope that was uh, possible thank you so much and best of luck for the future <music>